Hello everyone, my name is Clancy and welcome to the Clancy so Without Further Ado. Let's get into this video. But before we get into the video, yes, we made it to that 1000 goal that we had about the likes. Thank you so much to everybody that has watched the previous video. I know it was long, but guess what? YouTube said this. Yes, YouTube was impressed with you guys for watching that video. I didn't think that it was going to go beyond a thousand views because it was an hour long. But anyways, I needed to say what I needed to say in that video so that I paint you a picture of what exactly transpired at the knockout thing I caught yesterday. Another thing that I want to apologize about, the video was supposed to be uploaded at 10.30 because I was done with it by around... Let's say quarter to 80-ish or so. The mistake that I made was that when it was uploading because of my Wi-Fi also was um, dancing because of load shedding, I thought, okay, let me lie down while it is busy uploading and then uh, once it's done, by 11 o'clock, it will be up. No. Clantis wakes up the following day at 6.30. And I'm like, ooh, my video. I'm so sorry that it came up this morning. You're supposed to have gotten it last night. But anyways, it did very well because of you. Thank you guys so much. Let's continue on this trail, guys, by giving each video that I post a thousand likes. That's all I'm asking for. A thousand likes. Thank you so much, you guys, for your support. I highly appreciate it. But anyways, in today's video, I'm not going to do the usual because there are some things that I picked up from uh, Bongani Tanzi's testimony, which kind of got me really, really concerned and also got me very angry, to be honest, because I do say something in this video that some of you might say, no, Clancy's don't say it like that. But the thing is, what do you do in a situation like this? Because at the end of the day, the people that do these things need to be reminded that you are not going to get away with this for a long time. And the worst part is when your offspring are the one that would have to suffer the consequences of your actions. So that is why I feel like I need to say what I need to say in this video. It's a little bit different and there's another different aspect towards the end of the video. And I promise you I'm not going to make it a long video because you guys had gone through that one hour long video. Once again, I'm going to be reading from the script so that I get to say everything that I need to say. So... Here it is, you guys. Okay, did I ask you to smash the like button? And also, if you're watching the video and not subscribed, please consider subscribing and click the bell notification. Thank you so much. And welcome to the new clan members, your honorable clan members that have recently joined the channel. Thank you guys so very much. So this is what I say in my script. Before I get into my views about what transpired in court today, I am truly having an issue about the fortuna. You remember the fortune that uh, Sergeant Mohano was driving? There was an AVL that was not to make sure before it was asked to be put into perspective. Remember that AVL? There are some few things that the AVL has said, and I picked up two things in that AVL. Now, let's start there. I am truly having an issue about this fortune that transported Bongan in Danzi. The AVL or some document showed speed limit violations. And sudden breaks, meaning when the car sudden stops. Uh, and when Sergeant Mukhane was asked about these two events in his evidence in chief on the AVL by Baloy, guess what he said when he was explaining himself? He explained as the vehicle having returned from service. That's what he said. It had returned from service. Resulting with him pressing on the accelerator without realizing that he was now over the speed limit. That is what he said. Jiggy Jiggy, when he's under cross-examination by uh, Advocate Mgome Zulu about these stops at the engine garage, where the Fortuna was uh, there for more than five hours, suddenly the vehicle had mechanical problems. Not only did he mention about the sudden brakes and the speed, uh, speed violations, but also why the vehicle kept stopping being switched on and off at uh, at a certain road and he remember he said there was a lot of traffic lots of traffic and lots of road signs that is what he said remember that now my problem is i don't hear the defense capitalizing on this testimony because sergeant mukhane testified about the vehicle returning from service 
in his evidence in chief on the AVL. Secondly, the sudden breaks, the sudden stops. So he would speed, 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 and then he would suddenly stop. Right? That's what the AVL says. Sajid Mukhane said uh, to the court in his evidence in chief of the AVL that there was a lot of traffic and many stop signs on the road. That is why there are a lot of uh, breaks and all, sudden breaks and all of that. Mind you, I say in my note, during this time, South Africans were not allowed out of their homes because of the pandemonium. You know, Kororo, because on YouTube we can't necessarily say it's the real name, so we have to improvise. Now, what traffic was he talking about because the roads were empty? I personally feel that those sudden breaks were aimed at hurting Bongani Tanzi. When the vehicle came to a sudden stop on impact, he will hit the back of the driver's seat. So you are speeding, speeding, speeding. I mean, all of us have been in a speeding car and when it suddenly stops we all on impact move forward now remember Bongani Tanzi he was handcuffed from the back right so can you imagine his mobility when um, Muhane stops boom probably hits his nose against the, the, the seat in front of him or some part of his head all of this was aimed to exert more torture more pressure Fear, anger, frustration, and all of that for Bongani Tanzi to be prepared to start making that false confession. This to me was another form of torture to try and instill fear, anger, and frustration, preparing him to make it to stop by making the alleged false confession. Again, the defense is not capitalizing on this information because Mohane changed the status of the vehicle from freshly from, uh, from service to break down, to traffic and many stop signs. I don't understand why the defense is not capitalizing on that. I'm not quite sure if they've forgotten about uh, Mohane's uh, testimony when he said that the Fortuna had just returned from service. A Fortuna that is returning from service suddenly has a breakdown? Come on now, really? No ways. And then Danzi does confirm this, uh, that the stop at the engine garage and all the many stops that they had gone through, there was no such a thing as a breakdown, no such a thing as a mechanic that came over and uh, started fixing the vehicle or whatever the case was. It's a lie. And I believe that it's a lie. There's no such a thing that happened because Mohane said, I broke traffic laws because the vehicle was freshly from service. What's so difficult in understanding that? I don't understand why the defense is not capitalizing on this. Please, defense, start asking around this particular vehicle and its status. In Dante's evidence in chief, one of the defense lawyers must capitalize on this because I think it because I think it adds a lot of weight for the defense. Mohane deliberately misled the court. Bongani Tanzi's testimony was heartbreaking for me this morning and demonstrated how some people are just wild animals in their conducts towards another human being. All that I can say is justice might not be delivered today, tomorrow or next week. Those people that treated Bodentanzi and Sibia, but at some point... God will fight for them. God will serve the justice that they deserve. I hope they will be gladly waiting for it. The sad part for me is that when the sins of the parents are suffered by their offspring, which is very sad, why should I suffer for what my parents did to somebody because of a job that gave them the power? In fact, that job doesn't give you the power to mistreat people. As a matter of fact, you swore to serve and to protect, not to cause pain. But now your offspring are the ones that are suffering the consequences. All of us here on earth are born of another human being. That is why natural justice is for us all, aka karma. I think one of these evil police officers can testify to that. Actually, he can't because he's no more. May God fight for his vulnerable children, wherever they may be, and undergoing brutality from the people who promised to serve 
and to protect them. I personally, me, Francis Tumagude, I don't wish them well. I wish that whatever may happen to them when karma hits, they suffer unbearably. So I hope my banner did. Yeah, I said it. There is no way you would treat another human being that way and there will be no consequences for it. Natural justice will come for you. And I am saying when it does, it must exert so much pain that you cannot bear it no more for what you have done to innocent people just because you wanted a win. No. No ways. Suffer. Yeah, I know some people will say, no, Clatus, don't say it like that. I'm sorry, I'm going to say it. There is no, we need to remind ourselves as human beings that what we do to another human being, whether positive or negative, there is a comeback. If you do good to another human being, good things will happen to you. If you're going to do bad things to other human beings, bad things will happen to you. We need to remind ourselves of that. And if you're deliberately going to do bad to other people and you know what I'm doing is wrong, I am saying that when karma visits you, it must be more painful for you. More painful, unbearably. That's what I'm saying. So now let's get to a bit of what transpired at the Nohalden High Court today when uh, Danzi took the stand. I'm going to be very short on this one because... I feel like uh, while he's giving his evidence in chief, he's saying things very that were already being said by the witnesses when they lied on the stand. You and I already know what they said, and this is just confirmation or denials that Ndanzi needed to make in the court. But of course, there are some things that you are going to pick up and say, oh, really, this is interesting. And so this is one teensy winty thing that I want to say what transpired. Let's go to what transpired at the Nohalden High Court. I want to be very short because last night's video was way too long and I apologize for that. I needed to say things there. And I also want to thank you guys for the views on that video because YouTube, once again, let me show you. It said this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Listening to Danzi's experience from the call he received from Sergeant Muhola, pretending to be some kind of an employer with a private number. And then Danzi asked, if you indeed are the police as you say you are, please call me on a uh, police number. Of course, he then receives a call with a 011. Now, I have, if I understand, when the police call you on the uh, police station number, it does say South African police, doesn't it? It doesn't just say 011, it says South African police. I know this because last year, or no, the year before, when my house was burgled and they stole some few things, I went to the police station and when they were calling me to give me updates, on my screen it says South African police calling. So now this one was 011. And how do I... And the reason why I'm saying that Bomukhola as uh, crooks they call him on 011, and then the moment that uh, these two police officers, whom now we found out to have been Mabena and Muhanu, guess what they do? They take Ndanzi's cell phone. I think they were wiping out or they were deleting that 011 number. That's what I think they were doing, and because after that, after making a call, they then turn around and put handcuffs on him and said he was under arrest. For what? But there are some things that I want to say here that are educational for you and me. Something that I learned from Bongani Ndanzi's testimony today. And I wanted to bring it to your attention in case you were not aware of it. It was as if one was listening to a nightmare unfolds. The thing about a nightmare, it does come to an end. The same night. Unfortunately for Ndanzi's nightmare, it is still ongoing since the 16th of June, 2020, to date. Having two men at your doorstep asked to speak to a Sianda, to getting handcuffed and slapped across the face by Mabena. How are you resting there, sir? I can't imagine what I would have done. Now, I want to talk about the South African Police Service. And this is the educational segment of this video for all of us. Because I picked that up from the fact that Ndansi said two men came to his door, knocked. Next thing, he was in handcuffs. Next thing, he was in this nightmare he's in. 
so that you too do not find yourself in such a nightmare as Nancy did. There are things that I want to remind us as South African police. I remember this from back in high school. I went to an all-boys school, by the way, and uh, we would have all sorts of institutions coming to us, educating us about the apparatus of government, the private sector, you name it all, we learned it. And one of the things that I remember learning was about the South African Police Service and what we as civilians or the citizens of the country ought to do when we are approached by the police. So this is what I say. South Africans have been told time and time again. I don't know if you have been, but with us, like I said, in high school, we were pulled by the ear about this information I'm about to give you. To never speak to someone purporting to be a police officer without the name tag on their chest. In this way, it's on the left. Yeah, on their on the chest, right? And some kind of identification. If the South African police does not have a name tag, there has to be another identification that is an alternative to show you. Because the police know that they are going to use force on civilians, if you ask them about the name tag, that is when they will start intimidating you, they'll start arguing with you. If you are unfortunate, that's when they will kick the living daylight out of you. All because you want to see a name tag. They don't want to use their name tags because they know they are violent. And they don't want to be identified by you whenever you go and open a case of violence or a case of assault or whatever it is against them. You would not know who those people are. You wouldn't. We've seen on TikTok videos of police officers stopping vehicles in the middle of the night and without wearing their badges. And the South Africans are asking to see their identification. And this is when you will start seeing intimidation, argument, and threaten to shoot a civilian for asking what they were asking for. Imagine a whole taxpayer. You are threatening them that you are going to shoot them simply because they want to see your ID. Talk about shitting on the plate that you eat on. The truth of the matter is every South African police member knows that they must have their uh, badges on their chests. It's not an option. If they don't have their name tags on their chests, the least that they can produce to you is their appointment card. Even the South African Police Service website, which is www.saps.gov.za, says it loud and clear when you are approached by a detective. And I quote, if you are approached by an official claiming to be a detective, you must, listen to this, you must always ask him or her to identify themselves by presenting his or her appointment card if they don't have a name tag. Just to read further from the website, this is what it says about police officials coming to you or stopping you for that matter. And let me read what it says. This is on the website of the police service. It says identification. Okay, identi the, head the headline is identification of a police official. In order to see if a police official is wearing a name tag, you have to be close to him or her, which means that you are in you are in one to one situation with the official. If he or she is not wearing a name tag, you cannot just ignore them but you have the right to ask the official to identify him or herself by showing the appointment card, which must be carried by each and every police officer. There is not may, it must. Even the personnel appointed under the Police Service Act in the South African Police Service carries a distinct appointment card, which are issued to them if the official refuse to identify him or herself by showing the appointment card, you can demand that you wish to speak or be approached by the official's supervisor or commander. Furthermore, 
You must remember that if you feel unsafe, for instance, when followed and instructed by an apparent police official while driving, you can drive to the nearest police station in order to make sure that it is a bona fide police official that instructed you to pull over. Remember that police officials attached to the detectives in the South African Police Service are working in normal private clothes and do not wear name tags. If you are approached by an official claiming to be a detective, you must always ask him or her to identify themselves by presenting his or her appointment card. Close quote. This is educational purposes for all of us. The part that I also wanted to bring to your attention, especially when you are a woman, but with what is going on in South Africa, I think both men and women, you are driving in the middle of the night or late at night, coming from wherever you are coming from, a single police van stops you and tells you to pull over. Listen, guys, turn on your hazards because the police officers know this. They know this. Turn on your, uh, your hazards on drive slowly maybe at about 60 kilometers per hour and drive to the nearest police station whether they are legit or not legit police officers for your safety drive slowly with your hazard hazards on to the nearest police station if they are legitimate police they will follow you with no trouble if they have a suspicion about your car then they will check it at the police station not in the middle of nowhere do not make that mistake. Even the website says that. But I am having a problem, a trust issue with the South African Police Service. I don't trust them no more. While I was listening to Bongani Tanzi in court today, I, it was confirmed to me that I can't trust the police under any circumstances. But now what is the alternative to the police if I don't have any trust in them? So then I thought, hmm, right. When it comes to the police exerting some kind of violence on me, don't go to the police station and go open a case because they are not going to do anything. They are going to lose the docket or they will lie that you never came and opened a case against the Ozaguabo, their colleague or colleagues. They will protect them at every cost. They covered up for each other. We've seen this in this very trial. So what one to do? This is my advice. My advice is approach the iPad. Is it iPad? iPad. Independent Police Investigative Directorate. They are the ones, even though I feel they don't have teeth, they don't have teeth, but at least you would have a file with them that if anything should ever happen to you, look into the police. They are the ones who did this to you. So this is what I say in a little note. If you ever encounter a situation with police officers, don't go report them at the police station. You are not going to get the help you need. Instead, approach IPID, Independent Police Investigative Directorate. They will help you. Their contact number, as I've written it down, is 12-326-0408. Let me repeat that, 012-326-0408 or 012-399-0000. I repeat, 012-399-0000. Those are the people you should approach somewhere, somehow. I believe you will get the, the help that you need. It's unfortunate that us South Africans can no longer trust the police. The people that swore to serve and to protect us and getting paid off of our tax. They are the people we cannot trust. How is that even possible? At some point, the lawmakers will have to give IPID teeth so that the police can begin to toe the line of duty when handling citizens and even suspects. South Africa is a constitutional democracy. It is not a police state. And our police service needs to understand that. Since the death of the scorpions, remember the scorpions, guys? Remember how everybody told the line? Remember how everybody was afraid of the scorpions, including the police, the government officials? Everybody did not want to be stung by the scorpions.
But since the death of the scorpions, crime in South Africa shot up, including uh, politicians, police officers, everybody is doing crime these days. People that we pay our tax money to serve us, instead, they are stealing from us. I then make an observation and I say, I am voting for a political party that will bring back the scorpions as they were. Their independence, their teeth, their prosecutorial powers, the works. That's the political party I'm voting for in 2024. If you're a political party, a leader, and you're listening to this, if you bring back the scorpions as they were, you have my vote. Enough is enough. Well, guys, I think I will leave this video right here. The last segment of the video, of course, it was educational because we are in trouble. It looks like we are on our own. And it is so scary when you think about it. What Bongani Tanzi went through, it could have been any of us. From being a Siyanda to being a Clantus that is now being taken. And now I'm pinned with a murder I never committed. That's a nightmare for anybody. Anybody. Anyways, guys, if you like the video, give it a like. If you didn't like the video, give it a like. Anyways, do subscribe to my YouTube channel. And don't forget to click the bell notification so that you would get notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much to everybody that's super thanking the channel and supporting it financially. I highly appreciate you guys very much. May you be abundantly blessed from the bottom of my heart, honestly. And also, leave me a comment down below and let me know what did you think about what transpired at the Knockout and High Court in the Senzo Mayua murder trial also share this video far and wide i appreciate you guys so very much Mwah, i love you goodbye